So uh, thank you very much. Well, the idea of this talk is just to show and discuss uh, several aspects uh, related with subduction that occurs in, let's say, not normal margins, strange uh, margins, rare, or what we call odd margins. Uh, just to start with, uh, we'll have a look on a general view of a global view of uh, plate uh, boundaries. And this is a nice picture that you can find in, in, the, in the web. And you see that uh, in this uh, blue color, we have subduction zones, like here and like here. In red color, we have uh, uh, diversion plate boundaries. In uh, pink color, we have, like here, some compressional plate boundaries, but not uh, active subduction, let's say. And then in, in green color, like here or like here, we have these transform plate boundaries. So uh, what we see here, or what we realize here, is that more than 60% of the, the subduction uh, plate boundaries are concentrated in the Pacific, and especially in the South American plate, and this in, 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 uh, in, in Central America, in the north, in the, Aleut in the Aleutians, and also in the northwest of the Pacific, and also here in Indonesia. So what is interesting in these uh, subduction zones is that they share several characteristics. They are very long and linear trenches. When I say uh, linear, is, is that they, they don't show uh, a large, let's say, uh, uh, segmentation. They have a very uh, uh, a deep seismicity and very well-defined Benioff zone, like, like in this case in Japan. They have a unique subduction polarity. They uh, so, uh, are dipping always in the same direction along the, 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 the same range, of course. And then also they, they show volcanoes that can be orogenic or an, an orogenic volcanoes. This is a picture, a typical picture of a subduction zone, for instance, in, in, in the Andes, beneath the Andes, is uh, what, what is called the Andean subduction, and this is, uh, for instance, in Japan. So, the kinematics of uh, plate boundaries, plate boundaries is quite simple, in, in, in at, at first sight, at, at least. So, what we see here is uh, the velocity of subduction, which is uh, the, the real uh, uh, velocity of, of, this, of, of what is subducting, actually. Then this is the velocity of, of the subducting plate, and this is the velocity of the trench, in such a way that the velocity of subduction is the sum of the velocity of the subducting plate plus the trench. And here we, we see two end member cases. This is when all the subducting plate is actually, subduct, uh, is, is, is actually subducting, and then the trench, sorry, the velocity of trench is zero, and then you see here, well, probably you don't read the numbers, but this is this point related to this point here, and here in this other member, what we have is that the subducting, the velocity of the subducting plate is zero, but we have subduction because it's the trench that is moving towards uh, the subducting plate. And of course, we can have this case, which is an intermediate case. What is interesting is that in this case, we have no extension in the overriding plate, whereas here, the extension in the, the back arc extension, let's say, is maximum. And of course, in this case, we can have everything in the middle. So these are very well-known examples of back arc extension or where we have a retreating of, of the slab. And this, is, this corresponds to here to the contact between the Pacific and the Australian plate. This is the Tonga Trench, uh, the New Hebrides Trench, or also we can have the Caribbean plate with the Lesser Antilles Trench. And here, uh, the, the Scotia plate in South America. So what is interesting when we have this retreating or when we have uh, uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this uh, rollback of the subducting slab is that we are 
facilitating the formation of what is called the abduction channel, and then we are facilitating the exhumation of metamorphic materials that are going within the subducting plate, reach some depth between 40, 60, 80 kilometers, and then are exhumed through this subducting channel. The other interesting thing is that the structural position of these metamorphic complexes and the creationary wedge and the foreland basin determines the polarity of the subduction. So in this case, if we have this configuration, for sure that the subduction is dipping to, to, our, right, uh, to our right hand. Another characteristic of this uh, um, retreating, uh, uh, when we have this retreating slab or backer formation, is that we have this uh, corner flow or what is also called uh, poloidal flow in, 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 in the subducting plate, but also this, uh, uh, cor uh, this uh, subducting edge uh, flow or uh, toroidal flow in such a way that the, narrow, the narrower is the subducting plate, the, the, the stronger influence of this H, uh, H uh, flow here. So, till here is what we can call typical subduction regions. But if we move to Indonesia, to this part of, 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 of the earth, what we see is that the subduction pattern is very, very complex. Here we have short and curved trenches. We have a more diffuse seismicity, especially in the region here. We have a non-unique subduction polarity. We can see here, for instance, how it's changing from north to west in, in, this, uh, in this subduction zone. And we have, of course, uh, the, the, the region is dominated by slab uh, rollback uh, processes. Even if we move to the Mediterranean, the situation can be more complex. We have seen this morning several models of, uh, in, in, the, in the Mediterranean, and what we see is that we have a lot of, let's say, subduction regions, like in the Gibraltar Arc, the Calabrian Arc, the Atlantic Trench, etc. and also here in the Carpathians or in the Alps, a former subduction, etc. So to give an idea, for instance, in the Calabrian uh, uh, Arc, what we have here is an image showing the interaction between the Adriatic plate, the Ionian slab, the Tyrrhenian plate, and the African plate, just to explain the volcanism uh, of the Edna, for instance, pro pro proposed by Wisman and Noor in 1999. This is a very nice picture that we have seen already about the Mediterranean, where we see here how the slabs are sinking into the mantle. We have lateral tears, we have horizontal tears, and this facilitates the circulation in the mantle in, a, in horizontally and also vertical or poroidal and toroidal uh, circulations. And now what we will do is just to move to the westernmost Mediterranean that is just the region that is not show, shown in this figure. So if we move to the Alboran, uh, well, to the Vetic uh, Reef orogenic system, which is this part here, what we see is that presently, if we look uh, at, 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 at what we see at the surface, what we see is that we have a diffuse plate boundary, like here, you see the, 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 these are the, the earthquakes, the, the hypocenters uh, distribution. Uh, what we have also is a coeval extension in east-west direction, more or less, and north-south compression. Uh, lasting the, the last, uh, let's say, 25 million years. Also, we have the arcuate Baltic Reef erosion, which is this region here. And then we have alkaline volcanism in, in Alboran, but also in, in, in the Middle Atlas. The present-day margin segmentation that is shown by these uh, red lines here, and a distribution of the high-pressure, low-temperature metamorphism that is in some way anti-symmetric. I mean that in, in Iberia is located in, uh, here in, uh, well, in this part, in Alboran is located in the, in the Iberian margin and partially in the reef. 
and then here there is no metamorphic rocks, and then in what is the, the, the Algerian domain, we have the metamorphisms here in the Great Kabylis, but not in, in the Balearic promontory or in, uh, or in the Iberian margin itself. So if we have a look on the deep structure in the region, these are uh, uh, two uh, tomographic models. This is uh, by Villasenores, Pagman, and Eng Engdahl in 2003. And this is a very recent uh, uh, model produced uh, from this uh, interaction between Picasso and Topo Iberia projects. And what we see clearly, and it was also seen in the tomography by, by Warren Spagman in 2000, that we have here a slab that is uh, occupying, let's say, what is the Vatican Reef and partly uh, the West Talboran uh, Basin. And this is at 200 meters, this is at 320, and this is at 530 kilometers, and then this slab reaches depths of about 600 kilometers. And there is no discussion about that this slab is dipping towards the south and towards the east in this direction, as was proposed by Wortelan Spagmal in 2000, or Garcia Castellanos and Villaseñor in 2011, or very recently by Besada and Palomeras. What these authors are proposing is that this slab is not continuous, but apparently there is some lateral tear affecting the, the central and the eastern Baltics. So, of course, uh, have been proposed many models to explain the evolution of this small region in the Mediterranean. And here there is a compilation of several of, of uh, these models, mainly proposed by Facena, Bullin, Rosenbaum, Andries, Spangman et al. And they share several uh, common features. The first one is that the initial time of evolution of all these models always started 30, 35 million years ago. Uh, they assume that uh, there is a continuous or non-segmented plate boundary. The polarity of the subduction is always directed to the south, uh, uh, sorry, to the northwest. There is uh, a large west westward drift of the Gibraltar front that may reach even more than six, 600 kilometers, and the trench must rotate more than 180 degrees. And this is because if we are starting with a subduction that is dipping to the northwest, and finally we want to have the subduction dipping to the southeast, then we need to rotate the trench, otherwise it's not possible. So, the thing is that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, none of these models take into account the pre-tertiary evolution of the margin. And this is uh, quite important because, as you can see in this picture, what we see here is the, let's say, the plate kinematic reconstruction based on, uh, on Rosenbaum 2002, Rosenbaum et al., uh, from 150 million years, late Jurassic, to late Miocene. Here, at this time, Jurassic, we have opened the central Atlantic, and as a consequence, Africa has moved eastward with respect to Iberia. But Iberia still is not attached to Eurasia, and, and uh, in the following million years, in, in, in early Cretaceous and latest Cretaceous, is just rotating and approaching to Eurasia, and then is welded at uh, late Cretaceous with, uh, with Eurasia. So what, what is interesting here is that what produced the movement of Africa with respect to Iberia is the extension of these small, let's say, basins or these small segments of oceanic crust. Actually, it's not oceanic, a pure oceanic, because here what you can see is a crust, uh, is a, a lithospheric cross section affecting, in this case, the, the Gorringe Bank, which is located here. That previously, well, uh, Cesar showed a little bit the location. And what characterizes this region is that we have 
uh, the, the Gorringe Bang is essentially a periodotitic uh, massive, very serpentinized, with serpentinization reaching, let's say, 20, 30, 40 kilometers depth. And then we have this thrusting, uh, which is affecting the whole uh, massive here. Here, in the northwest, what we have is really oceanic crust, pure oceanic crust, or typical oceanic crust. And in this margin, we can have either a transitional continental crust, it was thought in 2010, but now probably is oceanic crust, as uh, Cesar Ranero proposed in his talk. But this doesn't matter. What is important is that if we reconstruct this Gorringe Bank, what we, what we end up is with this image, where we have essentially exhumation of mantle, of periodotitic mantle, because this extension is produced at a very low velocity. And what is also true, or, or, or probably true, is that this extension produces a very, very segmented margin according to the reconstructions by different authors, for instance, Skettino and Turcot, or whatever, or, 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 or other authors. So the idea is that at that time, for instance, at 80 million years ago, what we have is a highly segmented Ligurian domain, which is this uh, Ligurian, uh, sorry, Alpine Tethys domain, which is here. And then Africa was separated from Iberia about 400 kilometers. Now, at that time, we initiate the convergence between Africa and Iberia. And since we have a strong segmentation of these domains, this is the the Algerian domain, this is what we call the Alboran domain, and this is the Gulf of Cadiz domain, and this is the Gorringe domain. Since this is very, very segmented, we have the freedom that when we initiate the convergence, we can subduct these uh, domains individually in such a way that this domain, the Alboran domain, is subducting to the southeast, whereas this domain is subducting to the northwest. So uh, we have reconstructed the model, uh, well, this, this, uh, the, the, the evolution of the, Alboran, the Betic Reef uh, system according to this assumption. This is the main assumption that we have. But we also have into account geological and geochemical constraints like as structural geology and tectonics, and then um, sedimentation, and also uh, metamorphism. And this is compiled in this table that, if you want to go in detail, you can go to this publication in 2012. So what I will show you right now, uh, now is rapidly several, uh, several images of the time evolution of the region. So what we have here is starting at 85 million years ago. We have this configuration. I insist that this is an odd margin in the sense that it is not a pure uh, oceanic uh, lithosphere is not a large oceanic lithosphere. The distance from here to here is about 400 kilometers, no more. And then we start the, 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 the convergence between Africa and Iberia at 2 millimeters per year because in the first 40 million years, this, the shortening is accommodated not only in the Betics but also in the Pyrenees. So the next step is this one. Then here we are subducting the sediments and, and the crust, obviously, that we had in these paleo margins, and, and this is at uh, 45, uh, 47 million years, and then we are producing the metamorphins here uh, in these sediments. Then, at 30 million years, what? Oops, sorry, what we have is the stacking of the internal units and the erosion of the malagides. This means that the metamorphic rocks has been exhumed already here, or started to exhume. Then here at 25 million years or 23, what we have is the subduction rollback, and then we have extension in south-southeast uh, direction, and then we have a hot mantle influx, uh, just to explain, uh, no, sorry, uh, we have a hot mantle influx and the Alpuharri erosion, and then here at 18 million years ago, what we have is the tearing of the slab 
the lateral tearing of the slab, which facilitates the east-west extension and the peak of thermal uh, metamorphism, or high temperature metamorphism. So then at nine uh, million years, as uh, also proposed by, by um, Thesser, what we have is the cessation, the stop of this, uh, of this uh, let's say, retreating of the slab and, and, and all the process associated with. And then we have uh, what is the present day situation, which would be something similar to this. This is the slab that is now dipping uh, to, the, to the south and to the east here. And this is uh, the region of Algeria where we see no, uh, we, we, in principle, there is no slab uh, beneath. So to look this in a 3D movie, let's say, this is at 25 million years in Oligocene, late Oligocene. Then this is base Bordigallian. This is late Bordigallian, Langian, uh, early Tortonian, and zero million years. Note that here we have the interaction between these two slabs. Here we have this east-west subduction. And here we are forming, well, actually here we are forming this domain that Cesar called uh, um, arc volca uh, volcanic arc domain. And according to us is the interaction between these two subductions what is forming this domain. So this is uh, the figure of all these, uh, all these steps, time steps. And this is a very uh, nice uh, model that uh, has been published uh, very recently this year by Chertova et al. in the Utrecht University. And I think that the important thing in this model is that this is the first 3D dynamic model evolution applied to the region. And these authors, what uh, tested are three different scenarios. This is, let's say, what is the Rosenbaum or the Wortel Spangman model where the subduction initiates here and then we have the turn, the, 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 the turn around this, this point of the slab till the present day position. This is a second scenario where we have this subduction from actually uh, France, let's say, or the Gulf of Lions till the, till the, the Gibraltar arc and then the subduction is just going retreating and the idea is if it is possible to produce the present day situation here. And this is the third scenario which corresponds to the model that uh, we, I, I presented right now. And is this uh, slab here and going or moving or retreating to the northwest. Well, what is interesting is that uh, although these authors clearly uh, say that the best fitting model is the scenario one, this one, this one here, they, they also say in, in, in the publication that this scenario is also feasible. The thing is that in this model, uh, there is only a single slab. There is no two interacting slabs. And also, uh, uh, there is a real need to incorporate geological constraints in the numerical calculations. So just to finish, uh, some comments and remarks coming back to the subduction in odd margins. The idea is that the resulting style of subduction depends on the structure of the margins. Ultra-slow transitional settings may form odd margins and oceanic basins. Convergent in odd margins may result in a small scale subduction and a post-subduction polarity. And the incorporation of geological constraints on 3D numerical models is needed. And this is the, the end of the story. Uh, time for question. Okay, thank you. Um, you, you mentioned that the rotation of uh, Spain happened until well, between 18 and 15 million years ago, something like yeah. that. And then you have the, the actual subduction happening much later. So there's a, there's a period of, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 40 million years uh, in between. Isn't there a lot of healing of, this, of these structures 
these weak structures that could happen in that time and, and further growth of the lithosphere that would actually strengthen those, those weak. Uh, well, actually, uh, according to us, uh, subduction initiates at 80 million years because you need this to initiate uh, at 80 million years because with this slow convergence velocity, if you want to metamorphize the sediments at 40 kilometers depth, you need 40 million years. So, uh, well, okay. 40 or tw yeah, 25, 30. So there's a subduction signature at, at 80 million years already? Uh, well, uh, it, it's, it's what it, it is apparent. I mean, uh, there is no way to put the sediments or to put the, the metamorphic rocks at a depth that is estimated by geobarometers uh, if you don't start with the subduction uh, some million years before 30. In uh, between. Isn't there a lot of healing of, this, of these structures, these weak structures that could happen in that time? And, and further growth of the lithosphere that would actually strengthen those, those weak uh, well, actually, uh, according to us, uh, subduction initiates at 80 million years because you need this to initiate uh, at 80 million years because with this slow convergence velocity, if you want to metamorphize the sediments at 40 kilometers depth, you need 40 million years. So, uh, well, 40 okay. or tw yeah, 25, 30. So there's a subduction signature at, at 80 million years already? Uh, well, it, it's, it's what it, it is apparent. I mean, uh, there is no way to put the sediments or to put the, the metamorphic rocks at a depth that is estimated by geobarometers uh, if you don't start with the subduction uh, some million years before 30. Okay. Uh, in, in your model with two slabs with opposed um, uh, directions, uh, I have a hard time to figure out how this is going to work when the slabs are going to meet each other in the middle of the, of the ocean. Obviously, um, this is a cartoon that you, that you drew, but how, what do you think the mantle is going to do when the, um, the slabs are going to come next that, to each other? Yeah. They cannot ignore each other for long, right? Yeah. That, 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 that's a very good question, and this is what we plan to do in the next years, just a numerical model of this scheme, let's say. But in principle, shouldn't be po sh should be possible that. I mean, of course, you will have these uh, toroidal flows here and here and here too, but we have enough space just to allow for the mantle, the lithospheric mantle, to circulate around these labs. So what will be interesting is just to see if we have some acceleration or disacceleration of the, the re, of the trench retreating. But I don't see any reason that uh, this is stop just when they meet each other. I mean, well, the reason why is... Uh, hi, Amir. Um, yeah. So subduction initiation is um, a very active field of research and it seems that you know, every margin is getting its favorite scenario proposed. So, so if you look at initiation at passive margins, I, I totally agree with your conclusion that we have to look at the pre-existing mm. um, structure. Right? But um, my question is actually, do simple mar passive margins exist? Because if you look at present day margins, we're increasingly recognizing that they have a lot of variability in structure. Um, mm -hmm. mag mag magmatic component, um, extension direction, so are, are not all margins a bit odd? But you mean in, in, the, in the region or in general? In general. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, in some way, uh, we need to, to, to initiate subduction in passive margins, otherwise uh, we are looking at the last subductions in the wall, so in, in the history of the wall, I mean because uh, uh, the, Al the Atlantic, the, the, or let's say, yeah, the, North, the South American, no, yeah, the Atlantic Ocean, and also what is the Antarctic uh, uh, continent, they have no subduction. So subduction is mainly occurring in the Pacific. 
I don't yeah. know if I answered your question. No. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to briefly comment on the question before. Uh, I've done some modeling with this kind of uh, geometries and it's still very preliminary. There's a lot of work to be done in this sense. But what I found out is that in a closed box, it's uh -huh. very difficult to get these two subductions to go together because the toroidal flow is uh, opposite as well. Yeah. So, so uh, I might show you after if you want, but it's, uh, it it's interesting. It's a very yeah. interesting yeah. geometry. Yeah, you, you go down with one first and, and then the other. You don't get both slabs to go down at the same time. One gain and the other slab. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's no. probably a boundary yeah. condition. But. Yeah. I, I'm convinced about yeah. Very interesting uh, talk, uh, Manel. Very exciting area. Uh, 80 million years of evolution, pretty long time. A mm -hmm. lot of things uh, might have happened in the basins around the area. Sure. Uh, how sensitive, let's say, you expect uh, the 70 record to be to these things? For example, let's say in the Betics, of course, a lot of, a lot of missing record. You have the Mesozoic, yeah. the Triassic, and then you're in the Miocene. So, yeah. but let's say, what, is, what are the prospects to move this story f closer to the surface? Oof, it's difficult to answer that, uh, actually. No, the, the, the idea of that is just to, to check if this mechanism can work and then if it works, then we will go to these details on what are the surface expressions of these uh, mechanisms. So, but right now it's... But we have a first order problem, let's say this missing record. And uh, is, is, can uh, this, this uh, scenario that you present shed light on that? We have uh, just <laughs> to, to look at in detail on that. Yeah. Well, first of all, between the uh, Cretaceous and the Miocene, there is all the uh, uh, metamorphic record that dates back to the Eocene and, and the Oligocene, so it's not totally missing. So so we, yeah, yeah, sedimentary, but, uh, yes, of course. And uh, then on, on this picture, you, you, should, you draw a red line uh, between the two slabs moving uh, in different directions. Yeah. And uh, what do you expect at the surface along this red line? Because the, the lithosphere is quite thick, so it, it cannot be just a, a line. It, is, it has to... No, to but actually, uh, that, that's a also a very interesting question, because actually it's the same that uh, happens here, no? Here we have, a, we should have a transform region separating mm -hmm. Corsica and Sardinia and, and the Balearic Promontory, and you see not many things. Uh, yeah. So the, the thing is that probably this is... It's not, it is not just a transform fault. It's two slabs moving in different directions. Yes, yeah. I don't see serious <coughs> problems with that. What... Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are generating... Uh, uh, no, you, here you are generating what, what you see now in the Algerian basin, I mean oceanic crust essentially, or oceanic lithosphere with, uh, with of course, basaltic uh, crust, etc. And here you are generating this uh, very intruded crust, probably very extended continental crust, eventually some oceanic pieces, but... Uh... Yeah, okay. okay. Um... I was looking also at the figure, and we have several seismic lines crossing that region. It's mm -hmm. not that I remember that we have seen any particular large-scale feature that could be interpreted yeah. as some, I don't know what that is, a transform or something boundary, but we, we will look for that. Maybe there is something, and we didn't really appreciate it at the time. But, uh, you know, this is small... Uh, uh, slabs or these uh, uh, segments, uh, there, there are many structures in the, in the West Pacific that are kind of a little bit similar that give you these, these arcuate shapes like mm -hmm. that. Have you tried to look if you have a situation in the Pacific that somehow resembles what you're proposing there? Because there are many of these segments that 
deep opposite direction and things like that. But I, I don't remember that I've seen anything like that before. Not in detail. But uh, what we know, for instance, is that these uh, opposite uh, subductions occur, for instance, in, in New Zealand. In New Zealand, the Northern Island, the, 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 the subduction is dipping to the east, and in the Southern Island, it's dipping to the west. So uh, just at the opposite, uh, the northern is dipping to the west and the yeah, south to the east. Yeah, in the Tonga, it's it's two. Of course, there are larger scale processes. This is a very small scale process. Yeah, well, to respond to you, the most clear here would be the difference in between the Alps and the Apennines. Both are the, uh, subducting in different directions. And along the pole plane, you have to have a transform fault separating the two polarities. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's yeah. the most clear point. It's, it's there in the, figu in the figure. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, but you have two different subduction polarities, so you have to put something. And you don't see anything exactly. And the same happens in, in here. Who could happen here? You don't need to see anything because there, there are, it's a clear subduction pol change. Well, no, I think that the red line that uh, Manel was putting is no, the change in. in yeah, in the pop plane, but, but the, red line, the red line in any case is an old line that is not anymore there because this was the, 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 the Tetian Ocean. Now we have no the Tetian Ocean. We have the Western Mediterranean, which is a completely different uh, uh, oceanic domain. This is one. And then it's a line separating two subductions. It's nothing else. Yeah, but the two of the right are there now. Yeah. Yes. No, the two overriding plates are located in the cabilis and in the internal units of the petics. One is the cabilites, the, the cabilis are uh, just uh, with uh, southeastern vergens and the petics, the internal petics, with a northwestern vergens, opposite. And the four elements of the cabilis are to the south and the four elements of the petics are to the north. And in, in any case, uh, th this is a model is simpler than the others. It's simpler. Actually, it's simpler, yes. The only assumption is that you have a very segmented margin, and when you produce the, co the, the, the shortening, each segment is subducting in different uh, polarities. I don't see the problem. Yeah. So far. The, the central North African coast, you would have a slab remnant that's not observed until now in your model. Your model would predict that, and it's not observed. No, well, our model predicts that, but of course, as uh, other models, the slab can be turned and detached and disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> is what is what the other models do. 